Welcome everybody, it's Solomon, and in this video we are going to be talking about the blood vials and maybe the red eyes and kind of trying to find the explanation to both of them inside this video. But before we get into that, I want to apologize, I haven't made a video in over a week. It was because my computer messed up, I tried to update to Windows 10, but my computer just wouldn't start, it was really annoying. Uh, but it's all back to normal now, I'm still stuck on Windows 7, but either way it's fine. And I also, right after that, went on a trip. So either way, I'm going to be back to making videos every day, so don't you worry about that. But without further delay, let's get right into this. So let's actually start off with the blood vials, then we'll actually move on to the eyes and kind of figure this out. So first things first, let's think about the blood vials that we do know where we got them from, because we know each and every character has their own set of blood vials, but we don't know where they came from, so let's stick to the one that we know where they are from. So we're talking about Rick Toffin. But what are Richthofen's? They are actually the cell numbers of two characters from Mob the Dead, Finn and Cell. So what exactly did Finn and Cell do? So they were criminals and what we thought was, ha was happening inside Mob of the Dead is that they are trapped there until they repent. But if you actually listen to Cell and Finn's quotes, they actually do repent and they're regretting everything they did. Unlike Billy who doesn't repent at all and Weasel, I'm not too sure if he actually repented but he wasn't actually that bad of a guy. He just was a, but one thing he does say in his quote which I found very interesting Weasel says he's never killed somebody which in this opening cutscene he actually kills Ferguson or the guard which doesn't make much sense because maybe he doesn't remember that or something like that but either way I'm getting sidetracked so either way Finn and Cell still repent if that is the objective of this thing of this world that they were stuck in why didn't they survive? They repented, so why did they survive in the end? The cycle was broken and they ended up dying, or at least we assume that to happen. But what if it was someone else's fault? What if it was one of these guys that we are so familiar with who doesn't give a crap about anybody really? And that's Rick Toffin, because remember his blood vials have Finn and Cell's numbers on them. So what if he actually went over there, took their blood, and that was the reason they couldn't survive through it? Because they couldn't continue past this cycle their blood only allowed them to reset but since they no longer had this specific blood or something like this then well, they would make sense why they wouldn't be able to survive because like I said why didn't they survive they both repented unlike Billy and who knows why Albert or whatever weasel survived now it could be separate reasons why they didn't survive or maybe you just don't think they repented or something like that but what if it was this blood? So why exactly would we actually, why would Rick Toffin actually want their blood? Because you have to remember, back in Origins, Rick Toffin actually had them before the events of Origins, which is weird because we didn't know that Rick Toffin could actually travel between dimensions, or even if it was in the same universe, it's still weird because that's still in the future. So he, we didn't, from what we know, he didn't know how to travel between universes or to travel through time. It's, it's kind of confusing. I'm not too sure exactly what was happening there. But either way, why would Rick Toffin need their blood? What abilities could the Mob of the Dead characters do that we saw nowhere else? Well, one thing is the afterlife mode, but I'm not too sure if that has anything to do with really anything. And the afterlife mode kind of is really interesting because a lot of people say it's purgatory Mob of the Dead, which would not make sense why there's an afterlife mode because purgatory, if you guys are unaware, is one of the three areas you go after dying according to some religions. I'm not too sure if that's according to all religions' ideas of purgatory, but it's just purgatory you just repent until you can actually enter heaven or something along those lines. Um, that's just one idea. Of course, I'm not too uh, educated in the other, if there is other ideas of purgatory, but either way, it, it wouldn't make sense why there's actual afterlife mode well, you're already in the afterlife. That's just the point I'm trying to make. I'm not too sure why that actually exists, but go ahead and tell me what you guys think that's all about down in the comments. But either way, I am getting sidetracked. But again, like I was talking about, I do not think this is the actual case of ability that Rick Toffin was trying to get by taking their blood, but more like what I was talking about a while ago, why they actually didn't survive through the end. What all, what, so what other ability did they have? So no matter how many times they died inside the Mob of the Dead universe, they kept resetting. And what if this was a result of their blood? 
And if you guys remember, back at the, at the start of the DL of the Black Ops 3's release, even before it was released, we had this thing only the curse survived. And obviously, the Mob of the Dead characters seem very cursed. So what if this blood was the reason they kept restarting? And this is why only the curse survived, because they kept resetting until they could survive. But once he took away their blood that had the curse, that's why they couldn't survive any longer. So really think about it. If this is the reason why only the curse survived, then this would make sense why they actually couldn't survive till the end, even though they repented. But now think of why Richtofen took it. We had a maybe Richtofen's memories trailer, and he said the blood will protect him at the end. And also at the end of Zetsubo no Shima's Easter egg, we call he called it more of an insurance policy. So why is it called an insurance policy? So my idea is what exactly is happening inside Grad Krovi is that. It's an insurance policy because they could die and what happened when we actually got to Garai Krovi, maybe we died and all of course at the end is that's when Oshima's easter egg, all our characters got these blood vials and we end somehow ended up dying when we got there and this blood actually did protected us like it's our insurance policy and this is maybe this is going to be the where the blood is actually going to be played and going to be played into place and we died but it didn't just bring us back to life like some crazy medicine or super advanced thing but it actually bring us back to life in a very weird form and it actually when we ac actually somehow use this blood it took us to this cursed world and this is and we have to break the cycle just like mob of the dead to actually escape it just think about that it would make so much sense why we take their blood to just survive in case anything bad happened and we just have to keep on going inside this cycle and maybe we'll have the same thing inside mob of the dead that we have memories of or our characters have memories of these events that or, or the repeating events that they can tell what's happening or maybe just recoffing will have memories but either way tell me what you guys think about this theory well if you guys think it's interesting or you guys think it's crazy or anything like that if you guys can add on to this theory or if I made a mistake anywhere down the line but at least I hope you guys found it entertaining and if you did go ahead and thumbs up and if you guys want to stay tuned for more good eye crow v, easter eggs gameplay all this stuff storyline when the map actually comes out then go ahead and subscribe but I'm gonna go and I'll catch you guys on my next video